So when we first get into Monitor and we're looking at it and we're getting alerts and we're getting information about stuff that's gone wrong or, or we've had problems, we get those alerts and we understand that we have to look at them and respond to them. So for example, let's say that we have a deadlock. So if we look over here on the right hand side of the screen, we can see there's been a number of deadlocks occurring for the systems that we're managing. So we click on this and it will take us to the deadlock page for all of the various deadlocks that have occurred across all of our servers. And you'll notice that a lot of these are unread, they are not managed, and so they are waiting here um, in, a, in a problem state, frankly. They should, something should be done about them. We can further say, okay, well, hang on. Um, I want to look at this server's set of deadlocks. And so we can just keep clicking in and drilling in. And so now we can see that there's been a number of deadlocks occurring um, almost on the hour, every single hour. Um, so what if we want to get more detail about the deadlock itself? Well, that is available. We just have to keep clicking. So let's click on the deadlock itself, the one that occurred at 1041 AM. And then you'll see that what we have now is a complete representation of the deadlock graph. Now it's zoomable. You, you can move in or out as needed to ensure that you can see all the information that's there. You can get all of the details for everything. So if we take a look right now, um, the deadlock victim has been chosen and you can see that. And you can see over here information about the deadlock victim, including the query that was being run. Whereas if we select the uh, successful transaction, it shows us information about that successful transaction, what the host name was, the database, and its query. So we can start to see and figure out what each process was waiting on, what each process needed, and how the deadlock occurred. We can re reduce the overhead and look at fewer details, or we can look at more, however you need to do within your system. Um, if it's a parallelism deadlock, it may have more things on here and you'd want to drill into it. Now, we are not only showing you the deadlock information. We have the deadlock output itself. We are capturing the full deadlock XML through the extended events. So you can see all of the data. There's nothing hidden. We have it all available to you if you want it. Further, if you want to maintain comments for a given deadlock, you can do that. You can see the history of the alert, how often it's occurred. You can see each of the occurrences for the alert. And you can see a description about what a deadlock is and tips you can do to start avoiding deadlocks. This is a very, very detailed, focused mechanism to allow you to figure out what the problem is in deadlocking. And as we all know, deadlocking is about performance. It's about performance because if queries ran fast enough, they would never run into each other and they couldn't block or deadlock. But in this case, there's an update occurring um, and it's locking one process. There's another update occurring and it's locking another process. And between those two, they are hitting the deadly embrace of a deadlock. So one is trying to update suppliers and employees, and the other is updating employees and suppliers, and they are both causing a deadlock. And we can see that specific information occurring and understand exactly what's going on. So with all of that, we can then start doing real troubleshooting. By the way, you'll see down here, we've got additional information about the server. So you can see stuff that's going on on the server during that period of time. Now, if there is no information down here or if that information isn't useful for a deadlock, that's fine. Most of the time on the deadlock, you're going to be focused right up here on the deadlock graph, understanding why this thing is going through a deadly embrace. And we've given you enough of the information so you can, in fact, make that determination so that you can understand what's going on and make some changes, um, whether it's supplying indexes, changing the order on the queries, you know, whatever the operations are that you have to do. We've given you all the data you need to track it down and make that decision. And it's all available here. It's just not necessarily immediately apparent to you when you're starting from that first screen, the level of detail that you have. That's it. That's all I wanted to say today. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.